Hey, what's going on, guys? We are here again. Another Monday. Welcome to Eat Up Mondays once again with your boy Trevor Pope. It is an honor and a privilege to be with you guys. The Lord has brought us through another weekend into a new week. So I'm giving God praise on today for this opportunity uh, to see another day, to give his name praise, to do the work that he has called me to do, to share precious moments and memories with family members and friends. Once again, I am truly thankful and grateful. I pray that you guys are as well. Listen, before we get into the meal, don't forget if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And when you click that subscribe button, do not forget to click the bell. It will also notify you every time we upload a video. Listen, I thank you guys for joining me. The table is already set. We have a spread here. So without further ado, guys, if you're hungry, I know I'm hungry. So let's dig in. Today, our spiritual meal is going to be coming out of Mark chapter 9. We're going to be starting at that 33rd verse, and it reads as follows. And he came to Capernaum, talking about Jesus, and being in the house, he asked them, talking about his disciples, what was it that ye disputed among yourselves by the way? So there was some type of discussion that his disciples was having among each other, and they probably didn't even realize that Jesus you know, knew that they were having this discussion or this dispute. So when they finally get into the house, Jesus asked them, like, listen, what were you guys arguing over along the way or among the way? And verse 34 says, but they held their peace. So obviously they probably were maybe a little embarrassed to tell Jesus what it was because they probably knew that, you know, it wouldn't be really that important to the Lord, that it shouldn't have even been something they were arguing over. But the scripture says, but they held their peace for by the way they had disputed among themselves who should be the greatest man that sounds just like human nature verse 35 says and he sat down talking about jesus and called the 12 and saith unto them if any man desire to be first uh, he in other words he said listen i'm about to give you some knowledge i'm about to i'm about to drop some wisdom on you if any man desire to be first the same shall be last of all and servant of all and i wanted to talk about that today that you know, who is the greatest? Because we know when it comes to human nature, we know when it comes to life, that is always one of the number one questions. Who is the greatest? You know, no matter what category that's in, you know, it could be in, in family, you know, if they're siblings like mom, which one, which son is the best? Is it me or is it him or the daughters? Which daughter is the, is the best? Is it her or is it me? And that's just something that we deal with in human nature. But I love how Jesus lets disciples know. He says, listen, it's not about who's the greatest, you know, in your eyes or how you determine what great is. He says, listen, I am the one that truly determines who is great. And I'm letting you guys know today that those that are going to be considered great in this life are going to be those that are servant to all those that are serving those that are here helping somebody serving a purpose doing what it is that I have called them to do doing what it is that I have created them to do it's not all about who's the greatest you know when it comes to how you determine what great is and it's sad that that's what we as human beings do and that's not only in the world that's also in the church you know even sometimes when I'm riding down the road and I just look at different church names and it's, it's so comical because you know sometimes you see these titles like you know the greatest of the lord's people or the most holy blah 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 you know like everybody wants to be better than everyone else and that can be in the church or outside of the church and that's where we get a lot of these denominations from you know god never 
intended us to have denominations. There was never supposed to be sex in the church, different sex in the church. No, but those denominations came about because somebody was trying to create something to be better than somebody else. So now here we are with all of these different churches that say, well, I'm this and I'm that. And we over here are this. What what are we doing there? We're, we're trying to be different from one another. We're trying to say, listen, our ways is better than your ways, but we were only supposed to be five following one way. It's only one body. It's only one Lord. There's only one baptism, but yet and still man, because he's always trying to be greater than, you know, uh, his fellow man. We come up with these denominations. And I love what Jesus said in Mark chapter 20. And I believe it starts at uh, the 25th verse. It says, but Jesus called them unto him and said, ye know, and he's talking to his disciples again, ye know, that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them and they that are great exercise authority upon them. So that he's basically saying like, listen, in the world, those that are considered to be great, like the princes or those in high authority, they exercise their greatness or their power over the people. But listen to what he says in verse 26. He says, but it shall not be so among you. But whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Let him be your servant. Let him serve you. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto. Now, this is this is the son of God. This is God in the flesh. If anybody walking this earth should feel like they're the greatest or should be uh being served or, or, you know, being served hand and foot and waiting on, it should be him. But listen what he says in verse 28. He says, even as the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. He said, even me being God in the flesh, being the word of God, I came to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So what is Jesus saying? I came to serve with a purpose. We were all sent here with a purpose, guys. And it wasn't to be on this earth, walking around, trying to figure out if we are better than those that are in the same work that we are in, whether that's ministry or outside of ministry. No, the ones that are going to be greatest among all are going to be those that are are willing to serve those that are willing to humble themselves and say, listen, I'm here to do what I can for you, especially in ministry. And I talked about this in the last podcast. I talked about how Paul in second Corinthians four, he says, listen, we preach not ourselves. We preach Jesus, you know, and we, we are servants for his sake. We are servants unto you for his sake. We came to serve you. We came to give you the word and to help you to develop what it is that God has called you to do. We're not here to preach about ourselves. And that's why I talked about in that podcast. When you hear preachers constantly talking about themselves and what they're doing and what their family doing, that's a red flag. You have to be careful with that because that's not why we were sent here. We were sent here to serve you, to give you the word so that you can grow and become who God wants you to be. But as human beings, we have this huge problem with trying to be number one, trying to find out who's the greatest in whatever category it may be. Listen, I'm a sports guy, played a little bit of sports when I was younger, love to watch sports now till this day. And three of the major sports I watch, football, basketball, baseball, I pretty much had the same teams for like almost 30 years now in baseball, Yankees fan, football, San Francisco 49ers fan, and in basketball, I'm a Los Angeles Lakers fan. So any of you that follow sports know that I've been a very happy camper this last week because the Lakers uh, won the championship. And it's funny that even though we've won the championship and we know that Anthony Davis and LeBron James, is, who is one of one of the the best players to ever play the game. We know that that's the main thing that should be celebrated. But what comes out of this victory, the thing that should be celebrated, what's coming out of that? All of the discussions of who's better. Is Jordan the greatest or is LeBron the greatest? And it's like, why can't these guys be celebrated 
for being great within themselves and be celebrated for what they brought to basketball, what they brought to the game. Why do we have to compare these two? But that's just what we do. It's just human nature. We always have to compare ourselves to someone else. If we're doing something and somebody else is doing it, we always have to try to do it better than them. You know, even if we don't say it outwardly, privately, we're competing with these under other individuals. And it's like, that's not what this is about. You're supposed to do what it is that you can do to the best of your ability. You're supposed to leave everything on the court of life, leave it all out on the court of life, go as hard as you can for what God has called you to do. It's not a competition. And that's how people get in trouble because they look at what other people are doing. And sometimes if they feel not like they're not doing what they're doing, or if they're getting more attention, they think in their minds that, listen, I'm not doing enough or this person is doing better than me. But that's not always the case. God gave all of us individual purposes on this earth. And those are the purposes we are supposed to serve. And we are supposed to serve those on what ever level we supposed to serve them on the level that is for us the ability that we have to do that but what God is looking for is for us to do what we need to do on our level 100% he's not looking for you to try to be better than somebody else he wants you to be the best you you can be so I'm here to encourage you guys on this Monday stop competing with others stop comparing your life to other people stop trying to be greater than this one and greater than that one just be the greatest you that you can be and that way you will honor God you will make God proud and happy and you will continue to serve people the way that you're supposed to serve them and that's what the gifts God has given you that's what the ministry that he's put inside of you all of the things that he intended you to do while you were here but know that I love you guys and know on this Monday that it's not all about being number one it's not all about being the greatest we know who the greatest is and that is god let's be encouraged that we have an opportunity to serve the one that is greatest and to be used by him know that i love you guys and to the next time we share a beautiful spiritual meal together shalom